Well, the anti-gunners in the state of California have found a new argument. They are now arguing that Bowie knives are a basis for restricting your right to keep and bear arms. That's right. Early American regulations of Bowie knives, so they say, allow them to take away your right to have magazines and semi-automatic firearms. Stay tuned. We'll walk you through it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Dine, a proud American gunner, a constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so. Show your love for the right to keep and bear arms. Okay, folks, Bowie knives is not a topic I ever expected I needed to know much about, but it turns out we're going to need to learn a lot about it because this is where apparently the anti-gun movement wants to go as an excuse or justification to take away your right to keep and bear arms. That's right. In the case of Duncan versus Bonta, I think we're seeing a preview of where the anti-gunners want to go, specifically the state of California in the Duncan versus Bonta case, which, of course, is the case they're trying to justify their ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, claiming they're large capacity, but in reality, they're standard capacity uh, magazines. They are trying to rely on early American regulations dealing with so-called Bowie knives made famous by an American frontiersman and business person and land speculator who was also killed at the Alamo, Jim Bowie. California argues in their Duncan versus Bonta case the following, quote, from 1813, 1813 to the Mexican War, nine states and territories restricted the concealed carry of weapons such as Bowie knives, pistols, dirks, and sword canes. See how they're talking about Bowie knives there? And now, a couple things before we get into why this is wrong. You notice how they say nine states and territories. They're blending territories together with states. We know from NYSERPA versus Bruin that territories, especially Western territories, not subject to the Constitution, are generally speaking viewed as not relevant to interpret the meaning of the Second Amendment. So that's the first thing. But let's go on past that. Nothing I'm about to say, by the way, should distract you from the critical fact involving bans on arms. As you know, if you ban an arm, whether it be magazines, ammunition, or firearms themselves, or stun guns and Caetano. If you ban arms, the only thing that matters are, are these arms already in common use by Americans for lawful purposes? If the answer is yes, it's game over. Talking about Bowie knives or historical analogs is totally irrelevant because the Supreme Court already did the work of how to analyze a gun or an arm ban case in America. It's the in common use test. That is the test. It allows us to protect our right to have semi-automatic firearms, including AR-15s, as well as magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Game over. But let us move past that for the sake of argument and talk about why Bowie knife regulations from the early 19th century do not mean anything to your right to keep and bear arms. And they certainly do not restrict it. Number one, these laws come too late. You look at these laws in the early 1800s. Most of these start in like the 1830s and beyond. And as a consequence, as you know, that is way too late because the founding period is what's relevant when you're interpreting the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment was adopted in 1791. So you look like a, you laser in and focus in on 1791 and the time period around that to figure out what does the text mean and what did the people who adopted the Second Amendment intend. You laser focus at the founding era, which by and large has ended. This is not entirely completely true, but by and large, when you get to 1826, July 4th, 1826, the death of John Adams and Thomas Jefferson on the exact same day, on the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, both Jefferson and Adams die. Talk about divine intervention. I think there's something to be said for that. But basically, when you get to July 4th of 1826, the founding generation is basically dead. Uh, James Madison lives a few more years, but by and large, the generation is gone uh, when it comes to understanding the 1791 Second Amendment. So any law enacted after 1826 26 is largely historically irrelevant. Uh, it arguably can be a confirmatory analytic, but in terms of contradicting and reducing her rights, anything after 1826, I would argue, is simply not relevant and not a basis for taking away our rights as they were understood in 1791 when the Second Amendment enshrined our pre-existing right to keep and bear arms. That's the first point. The third point I want to make about these Bowie knife restrictions is that these laws in the nine states and territories that the uh, state of California is trying to rely upon to justify their banning on magazines to hold more than 10 rounds is that these were regulations. These were regulations. They're not outright banned. Specifically, these were laws that said that when you carried Bowie knives, you could not conceal carry them. 
As a practical matter, I don't even think it matters because if you've ever seen a Bowie knife, it's like nine inches long. It has like a, an inch and a half blade or something like that. It also has a handle. Um, I don't think these are the kinds of knives that you would generally be concealed carrying. I think you'd want to open carry them, and I think that's how they were generally carried. So the fact that you had some states that said you couldn't conceal carry it, uh, first of all, again, it's too late. doesn't matter in modern firearms. And beyond that, uh, it didn't say you couldn't carry them, and it didn't say you couldn't possess them. It just said that you couldn't conceal carry them which is not a historic analog that you can use to justify a 21st century ban on any arm. They're totally different. They're apples and oranges. But my fourth point I want to make about these Bowie knives that you need to know is that there was only two of the nine states that California is talking about, that would be Georgia and Tennessee, that had any kind of a ban at all. Uh, basically, the way these bans were not bans on possession of Bowie knives, these were the ban on sale or the ban on offering the sale of such weapons. Uh, totally different again. You know, you're banning the sale. You're not banning the possession. So arguably that's distinguishable. Uh, again, you're only looking possibly at two states, Georgia and Tennessee, in early 19th century. Those would be the distinct minority jurisdictions in America and thus are probably irrelevant to uh, any sort of longstanding tradition of regulating buoy knives or banning buoy knives or anything like that. Those would be more outlier jurisdictions. I should also mention specifically, this is very, very, very important to you lawyers, law clerks, and judges out there and scholars looking at this topic. In the famous Georgia Supreme Court case in the early 19th century called Nunn, N-U-N-N, that's Nunn versus Georgia or Nunn versus State, uh, that was the case that the United States Supreme Court has actually cited favorably. And in the Nunn case, they specifically struck down that part of the law that regulated, among other things, pistols and buoy knives uh, and said that it, like, you have to allow people to either open carry these things or conceal carry, but you can't ban both. So again, you actually have a Georgia Supreme Court decision in the early 19th century that the U.S. Supreme Court has subsequently cited to favorably state in that you could not ban the carrying of Bowie knives open and or carry. You, you could do one or the other, but you could not do both. So I think it's very favorable uh, ruling, again, suggesting that any of these Bowie knife restrictions from the 19th century American life has nothing to do, uh, no basis to justify taking away our rights to keeping their arms today in the 21st century as a historical analog, which they're really not. My final point I want to make about the Bowie knife argument by California is they also kind of blended in with another argument that goes along this line. They're basically saying that we can ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds in Duncan versus Bonta, and the reason why we can do that is we provide alternative effective means of effective you and your right to self-defense and right to keep and bear arms under California law, and therefore we have the right and the power, if you will, to take away individual right to keep and bear arms when it comes to keeping them from having 10-round magazines, or more than 10-round magazines, I should say. This obviously is not true, just as a reminder, in the Supreme Court decision in Heller in 2008, do not forget this, this is very important. The District of Columbia in that case tried to justify their ban on handguns by arguing that uh, by arguing that because they allowed people in D.C. to have access to shotguns and rifles, they could ban access to handguns under the Second Amendment. The U.S. Supreme Court in Heller says undeniably that's false. The Heller Court said just because you allow people to have long guns doesn't mean you can ban handguns. Giving them an alternative way to exercise the Second Amendment rights that you want them to do so is simply not allowed, and they specifically rejected it. So to the extent to the extent that California and Duncan versus Bonta or any of these other anti-gun jurisdictions are arguing that, hey, we allow people to effectuate their, effectuate their Second Amendment rights other than the ban, uh, that is simply not allowed because Heller specifically said that kind of argument is unacceptable for the purposes of constitutional rights, including but not limited to the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. So, okay, I hope you learned a little bit something here today about Bowie knives. There's some really smart scholars out there that have done a, a lot of work on this. I'll try to put some links to their work down below, and maybe we'll, uh, uh, we'll talk more about them in future episodes. But I did want to get this information out to you fast because Bowie knives are starting to make the rounds in the intellectual circles of the left and the intellectual circles of the anti-gunners. So I just wanted you to be aware of it and how to quickly respond to it. Uh, we'll do more deep dives down the road. Uh, and if you don't know the history of Jim Bowie and the Bowie knife, you may want to check it out. It's a fascinating story, uh, an Ameri a true American hero and a real tough guy. I think you might enjoy this story and maybe we'll cover it down the road. Okay, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.